Hi, you guys. Welcome back. And of course, if you are new to this channel, welcome. My name is Tracy Erickson, and in this video, I'm going to talk about symbology, but specifically, I'm going to talk about the duality of symbology. So stay tuned. Symbols have been used throughout history for many different reasons, but mostly for communication of some sort. We've been using symbols since the dawn of time to tell our stories and to share our myths and legends of the gods and goddesses of all the times that have passed. Symbols tell the stories of humanity. Symbols also represent archetypes, and symbols are even used today, still, to give instruction or simply as a universal symbol that everyone can understand, no matter what language you speak. Symbols are powerful because they connect to your subconscious mind. Symbols are the way that your inner mind likes to communicate with you through your nighttime dreams. And symbols are the way that your inner mind receives uh, communication from your imagination as well. So images and symbols are very important uh, when it comes to understanding your inner levels of mind. So... Symbols are just very powerful at connecting ideas directly to the subconscious mind of people. And obviously, advertising and uh, propaganda pieces and all that, they all know the importance of the images that they present to you. They look not only at the image itself, but they are very particular about the colors that they use or uh, about the angles and what exactly is being shown to the subconscious mind. So symbols are definitely a powerful way to connect to your inner self. So the more that we look at symbols, then the more that we're going to understand who we truly are. So that brings me to the topic of duality. So I really wanted to talk about symbology, but specifically, I wanted to talk about the duality of symbology because we live here in the 3D, the third dimension, all right? So that's the physical level of reality that we are living in right now in our conscious waking existence. So since we live in this particular dimension, we do have um, what is called duality here. All right. So we have night and day, up, down, left, right, north, south. We have positive, negative, uh, protons, electrons. <laughs> so we have the duality here. All right. And so there's what we might label as good and bad in every single thing that exists here in this dimension. So let's talk about that in terms of symbology and rituals. I just wanted to talk briefly about rituals and symbols here in this video um, because I use ritual symbols uh, regularly in, and that is when I read tarot cards, okay? So the tarot cards, are actually representing the different archetypes of humanity. So these are just the different ways that humanity expresses itself, right? And it's represented through the major arcana cards in the tarot. So 
Tarot obviously is rich in symbolism and each card has multiple images um, right there on the card. So the cards are, you know, could be read symbolically on multiple different levels depending on how much you know about symbols. <laughs> so I don't know. Let's see. The duality here, though, when you're looking at like the ritual symbols, such as the tarot card, let's just look, for example, at the death card. Only because most people see the death card as a negative card, negatively charged card. But us tarot readers kind of see the death card as more of a positive card. We don't only see this skeleton riding in on a horse. We also see the sun rising between the two pillars in the background. Um, and we can also see many different blessings taking place here. Not only the sun rising, but you have a priest doing a blessing towards uh, the image of death itself, right? Um, so, Although this death card might represent the ending of something in your life, this death card is also at the same time representing a blessing that has happened. Because, um, because of that ending, because of that door closing, then the next door was able to open and a new beginning is now able to take place. So as you can see, depending on your, the tarot reader, depending on you, uh, the person looking at the symbols, all of these symbols could definitely uh, be positive or negative. There is duality in these symbols. Now, another way that symbols can be kind of seen as dual in ritual magic is that you have white magic and you have black magic. And the white magic is generally that which is creative, that which is adding to or um, making things better than they were before. Whereas then on the other side of the coin, we have the black magic, which is destructive. This magic um, would not exist if it wasn't for uh, depending on stealing the energy away from others. So the white magic is a creative force. The black magic is a destructive force. So there is a little duality right there for you. But the dark magic, the black magic, can actually only be uh, practiced by inverting that which was created for good. So the dark magic is death and destruction. All right, and then now white magic knows that the power is within you. Dark magic sees the power outside of yourself in the world out there. White magic sees the power in the world in here. So there's a big difference in the way that these two uh, ritual techniques might happen, right? So the duality in symbols here is just, it depends on who is practicing. So. You can take the exact same symbol and let's take the pentagram, for instance, uh, the pentagon, the pentacle, whatever you want to call it. Um, and you can see that upright representing, you know, life and representing mankind. And um, this is known to represent the physical level of consciousness, which includes your you know, your physical, your five senses and your sixth sense of perception. Um, but if you take this image and you invert it, or if you turn it upside down on itself, that image is now representing darkness. It's representing Baphomet. Now, I really do want to do a whole video all about black magic and white magic. So, um, I just wanted to touch a little bit on it here in this video. So, now let's move on and talk about the duality of symbols when it comes to your dreams. 
if you have a dream that includes, let's say, a dog, for instance, there can definitely be a very dualistic response to this particular image. It completely, once again, depends on the dreamer. So, a dog for some people can represent loyalty, kindness, and friendship. And another dreamer, a dog could, to them, in their waking life, a dog could represent something that is kind of scary and has, you know, maybe a dog has bit them in the past. And so that would represent something um, on the other side of the scale for that dreamer. So the duality of symbology exists also within dream symbols. Now, just because one dreamer sees a dog as something good and another dreamer sees a dog as something bad, that doesn't mean that it really represents anything different. Let me explain. A dog in your dream is an animal. And actually, animals in dreams represent habitual thoughts and attitudes that we held in our mind in the day or two before the dream. So the interpretation of that particular dream symbol, while we can say in general, it has to do with some type of habitual thought or attitude or behavior, it is our own personal relationship to that particular symbol that will help us with our own personal dream interpretation of that symbol. Now, I really wanted to make this video because there are some people out there who will automatically label certain symbols or gestures, like hand gestures, um, what are they? Like different things as bad, um, just right off the bat based on their own programming. But I just want to remind everyone out there that there is duality in symbols. So hand gestures and symbols that you might see as bad could have actually just been inverted or used for bad purposes when really the symbol or gesture was initially created um, to give power to the one using that symbol or to the one using that gesture. So there's a difference between knowing your personal power and trying to get your power from the world around you. And the more that we understand symbols and the duality of symbols and how the symbols relate to us on our own personal spiritual journey, then the more that we can understand ourselves and the world around us as well. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. So if you like this video, be sure to click that like button. And if you're a viewer but not yet a subscriber, I am inviting you now to click subscribe down below. And once you've subscribed, you can then click the bell to be notified each and every time I upload a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending your time with me. I love you. And... I'll see you next time. Bye.